right guys, I promised you a tear down and rebuild, repair of this go-kart. Um, let's see, what can I tell you about it? It says that it's a Fox, Silver Fox GFX. So if anybody knows anything about these go-karts, please let me know. It says 6.5 horsepower. It seems to have pretty nice reusable brake pedals, which I'm going to have to move. I think I'm going to leave the brake pedal right where it is. And I'm just going to move the throttle pedal over here. I might cut this bar out, but I might need it for strength. No, it doesn't. So I'm going to cut that bar out. The seat needs to be remounted. My wife just came and helped me put it up here. But uh, I did do a little work on it. And I put it back together so I could show you guys what I did. Well, I got looking at the old little engine, and I had to figure out how to try to get the chain off. Well, I got looking and looking at the chain, and I couldn't find a master link on either side. So I figured the best way to do it was to first pull the CR CVT loose from it. So all I did is I took a pair of tin snips, cut the old belt. That's garbage. I took my impact, and... Uh, Took the drive clutch off, which I believe was a half inch. These are actually uh, English fine threads. I'll probably save this clutch. Maybe I'll give it away at Busco Beach, something like that. Maybe I'll get rid of the whole motor there. So I pulled the clutch off. Um, oh, I'm not going to do that. I got to put you on okay. the stand. So I Got you in the stand now. So after I uh, cut the belt off, I got the impact out. My little, uh, you've seen me call it the zippy tool many times. And I pulled. I pulled the, the bolts out of the CVT drive off the engine and we discovered that uh, the chain had no master link. So I got out the sawzall, brought the chain around, cut it with the sawzall. So now that crap out. Took a Phillips screwdriver and just disconnected the, the little clamp from the throttle. That was no big deal the throttle cable off. It's getting replaced anyway. It's junk. I was left with the, the bolts on the bottom of the engine, which I think were half inch. Yep. And uh, I took the half inch, the impact, and took the nuts off. Now, I, the, the impact was too shallow, so I don't know if you guys ever tried this, but then I put the socket all the way up onto the nut, and I put the square drive in as far as it could reach. And that made it deep enough to get the nut off. Probably you guys have done that before, but that's a little hint. Anyway, in case you need a little help on a little tight corner sometimes and you don't have exactly the right deep sockets. All right, nuts are off the engine. Out comes the engine. And it's just a little robin. I don't know how big it is. All right, so now we're down to ground zero. Now we're down to ground zero. Well, I'm delighted to say that this is a mechanical brake, but it's one of the better mechanical brakes. You see them at Go Power Sports as a whole kit for like $60, where you get the flange or the brake disc, and I think you get the bracket and the brake assembly. Well, this one's probably shot, but the disc is fine and the bracket is fine. And it's a self-adjusting bracket. You can see the caliper is kind of loose in there. It can slide on these tracks. So, uh, I just got to get that out. And what I was looking at right now was, <laughs> I got to figure out some way of getting that nut off. The nut on the... On that uh, 
quarter inch bolt is stuck because the bolt was bent and broken off. So I've been trying to hang on to it, but I think I need a 7 16 on that. Yep, all right. Let's see if I can get that bag off in there. That bag of do. Bag of do. I got a good grip of these old Craftsman players, which are kind of neat. They're sort of like self-adjusting, but non-locking, like kind of like vice grips. Anyway, I got the rod off. To get the caliper out now, I have to take it apart to get it over the flange because this bracket is welded. So I have to split the caliper at its separation point with these two big bolts and hopefully they'll come off. And they appear to be 9 16 and, and I started this earlier so I know what size they are. The nuts on the other side just partially show out through the groove. I put some oil on those threads to help break up the rust and get these bolts out. So I'll probably, I've got about 250 bucks worth of stuff ready to order from Go Power Sports, which includes four new shocks and a uh, new chain. Uh, I already got on eBay an open box Series 40 CVT torque converter. That's on its way, a week or so. It looks like the disc on this axle is very true. I've spun it. So I'm just going to wire brush it with my little uh, zippy tool and that little bronze brush and clean it up so it's nice and smooth, ready for the new brakes. So I got to have brakes, you know? You got to have brakes. It's a nice thick disc. It's at least 3 16 All right, so the nuts are off this. All right, yeah, the whole puck is gone. It's all pucked up. Parts are missing from the insides of this. But this is actually a pretty good uh, self-adjusting, self-centering brake. So, I'm not sure. How the heck I'm going to get this half out of there? Because this is all welded. Man, I hate to have to try to move that that disc. And I don't see any set screws in it. How the hell is that held in place? So this is a hex shaft. I guess it's the old 7 8 hex shaft, but the bearings feel pretty good. And uh, so for right now, I'm not messing with them. If I don't have to. Well, I don't know. I'm going to get this brake caliper out of here. Huh. Well, that kind of sucks. Because the pad is completely gone from the back side, so it's got to come out. Boy, I don't know. Always something, guys. Always something to screw you up. Can I wrap on me? Maybe I'll oil this up. Make another mess. Where's my oils? I just got some motor oil here. I'm just going to tap this lightly with my hammer because I definitely don't want to bend it. Well, 
If anybody has a solution to this dilemma, how the hell I'm going to get that out of there, I'd like to know. You can't get it out the back because there's a... They must have just welded it together in place. Shoot! Really? I mean, I can cut it out, but I don't know how I'm going to get the new one back in. You know? All right. Well, that's fun. No set screw. Not that I can see. Nothing on that collar. So how the heck is it held in place? I thought maybe it was plug welded, but it doesn't look it. Anybody got any ideas, let me know. just going to have to dismount the axle. There's only two small bolts here. I'll dismount mount this side of the axle and I can pull it out. All right. What size nuts and screws do we got on this one? Those look like half inch. See what I mean, boys? We're figuring this out as we go. I think I can just... No, I can't. Shoot! Why do they make it so good at all? They are half inch. It looks like this side has been sort of like tacked. What the hell? I can't get a socket in from there, but maybe I can get a box on. I've got to go find my uh, box on wrenches. All right, guys. Great time. All right. I actually had a ratcheting box end set right here in metric, and the metric seems to be working okay on this nut, even though I think it is a half inch. But the 13 seems to fit it fine. So, so I don't knock it over. Get my knee under this. Get the weight off it. Your knees are a handy tool. I don't know I should be changing the bearings or something. Okay. Out. Forward a little bit. Oh, no, that is like a ball joint. Okay, good. And out comes the brake. Okay. It says Thomas Manufacturing, but it looks just exactly like what I've been seeing on mine for these. Good. Yeah, that's like a high joint on this ball socket over here. I didn't break anything. I know they say these axles suck, but if I can make it work for a little while, I'm going to try to do so because uh, I just don't want to mess with it right now. You know, did you know? So we'll earl them up a little bit, clean out the dirt. Uh, 
any good mess. I'm not even going to put that back together because when my new brake comes, I'll have to put it back together. And I have a feeling I'm definitely going to have to make some sort of new engine mounting plate to fit that beast of an engine on here. I have a very large sprocket on this, which is going to give me tons of off-road climbing power, which is kind of what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for flat-out speed with this thing. The steering is too wonky. I'm more of a... Bearings actually feel really good. They're good enough for now. And, uh, all right, we're making some progress. I pulled one of the front shocks out. Those look like 3 8 bolts in them. So when I order them, I'm going to have to order uh, shocks for 3 These things are just shot. They, uh, they wobble when they bend. They flex this way. They don't go just straight up and down. Uh, so I'm just going to replace them. They got them for 20 bucks a piece at Go Power Sports. Nothing fancy. Um, for what I need, they'll be more than sufficient. All right. Well, let me wipe the oil off my hands and we'll uh, move on. This seat was just held on with a couple of uh, sheet metal screws right into the plastic. That was a fine job, wasn't it? Let's take a look. See. What we got up here? Yeah. This one's too close. See, I don't need this whole sliding seat bracket thing because everybody I know that's going to ride this, their feet are going to be more than long enough to reach the pedals. So, I noticed that this chair has a ton of preset mounting studs all in it already. So I'm just going to put some steel plates on here. I'm going to take this bracket completely out. Well, that chair ain't bad. It's actually a lawn tractor. Yeah, like a lawn tractor thing you do. Yeah, that's just bolted. Again. Half inch bolts, zippy tool. Where's my zippy tool? There's the half inch. I'm just going to put it fixed as far back as I can set it because I'm long legged. And I think I'm going to have to do the same thing. I'm going to push them on the stud. Easy peasy. Good trick. I'll get the other side. I'm get that rack right out of the way. They save so much headaches. What can I say? Come on. This little Dewalt tool right here comes through all but the biggest bolts. Alright, so that piece of crap is out of the way. Maybe I can use some of the tubing to make new brackets or something. bracket assembly. Dusted for the junk pile. I need to cut this guy off because I'm going to bring the seat all the way back and I'm just going to put some bars across here, you know. 
some kind of bar across there to mount it to. So, you know, you got to do demolition before you can do construction. Now, I have a new throttle cable assembly. So when you put your go kart together with electrical tape and zippy screws or something, whatever those are, self-tapper. Way to cut your cable. All right. The brake pedal is in, in, in fine shape. I'm not doing anything with the brake pedal. It's got a good return spring on it. It seems to do the job just right. This used to have some sort of shields on it. So I'm going to build, uh, I'm going to put mud shields on here to keep the mud from these front tires. So I'm going to probably cover this, bend some sheet metal like this, maybe fill in the whole front right here and around back like this on the sides. Because when you turn that front wheel, when you're going down the road, and you're in the sand, it throws the sand. When you're turned like that, it throws the sand right up on you. So if this was all boxed into here, of course, I guess I could just put a, a flap right out here like this. Or right out and then bend it down, but I still have to box that in a little bit. I'll do something just to make a mud flap kind of a thing. All right, I'm excited. We're getting there, making progress. Um, 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 um. Let's get that seatbelt in the right position. Now, it's, there's tabs over here for seat belts on both sides, so I think I'm just going to start with a lap belt. and see how I make up with that. I just unbolted that uh, seat belt tab from the center. My concern is now that my seat's not going to slide all the way back because of that. Because I kind of want it to be back as far as I can get it. So, Mr. Sawzall, give me. Da -da -da. Well, let's start from the bottom. Sleep, sleep. Right. Well, see, I'm going to have to decide what I'm going to... This must have been sitting out in the rain because there's water running out of it, but it'll eventually all run out. I need to grind these welds off the steering column and just recenter it. And I need to grind this off and recenter it. And then just this, get this whole crappy assembly out of there. And uh, 
get rid of this whole assembly and just put that those two heim joints right directly on the steering column. And that, that might be all I need to do to the steering for right now, and that'll really tighten it up. The bearings on these shafts, look. The bearings on these shafts are loose as hell. I don't know how to fix that. I like the size of the tires and they got good tread. I don't know if I need to get new spindles or figure out what's wrong with that. Hey, there's just a big nut on this end. All those spindles are is a piece of pipe with a bolt. You can see the bolt head. You can see the bolt head on here where they're just welded onto this pipe with a grease fitting and a half inch bolt. Very, very simple. Now see this has pin bolt in it. Which I set aside. But for now I'll just stick a screwdriver in it to hold it up. See it's supposed to be up here like that. And that's as low as it can go, okay? Because the shock limits the travel that low. So if that hind joint is off from here, let me take this thing apart. Let's see how that lines up. See if we can zip that bolt right out of that steering spindle thingy there. Maybe done be tight. That been be tight. Um, okay, so now I put a bar clamp on there. I'll try not to hit it with my saws all. see the, the threads so that's almost 99% of the way out all right so I'm working on that nut still and that end find myself a little chisel chisel that off okay there's a 3 8 bolt All right, bingo. That's not what I wanted to do, but that was what I wanted to do. So that thing is free. Free, free. Of course, this guy's bent the wrong way. They bent the heim joints a little bit so that they can uh, flex that fire, and the one on the this side is bent the wrong way, so I've got to, excuse me, I've got to unbolt this one and flip it over, that's all. Um, I just as soon take this thing right out of here if I can. I don't want something rattling around. I don't know if I'm do flase to it, we'll take that one off. Oh, that's 
got like an Allen bolt in the bottom of it. Well, that's out of the way for now, anyway. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See, that guy should reach the center just fine. I just got to turn this one over. And what size nuts have you got? Now, I'll take these apart. I'm a real stickler. Put this back together with Loctite. But for right now, this is just a test fit. To adjust the length of these a little bit. And they're going to be sideways like this. But these things will screw out, see? Why do they put stuff together like this? I just don't understand. about these bearings. See how loose? Of course a lot of it's the spindle. But I started unscrewing this nut and there's a old bear ball bearing cage in there with a few balls left in it. So somebody was just throwing scrap crap on here to hold the wheels on. I'll take a look and see what the verdict is on these spindles. Oh, well, this isn't worn. Though. This is worn a little bit. <sighs> That's got just a sleeve bearing in it. these guys could have regular 5 8 bearings put in here. That's just a, a reducer that's in there right now. Some sort of sleeve. So, I mean, not take off with this, uh, not tightened up, huh? That would be fun. Lose a wheel. Alright. I'm thinking about rebuilding this front end into a double A arm anyway. Putting another little box right up here with another set of control arms and building a whole different front end here. Putting a little rack and pinion steering right up in here. That would really make it nice and tight and stable. Puts the right kind of wheel bearings in this thing. I'll bet you you can buy 5 8 regular roller bearings for this instead of them stupid ugly sleeves. Anywho, that's it for the teardown though. I, uh, I was able to move the gas pedal from the center over to here 
And the bolt that came out with it is actually a shoulder bolt designed to fit the hole pretty tightly. And then it tapers down to about a 5 16 on the other side. So I just took a couple washers. There was already a hole here in the frame. And I just laid my uh, throttle cable here. So that'll be set up here somewhere. I'm guessing about the second hole. Probably all she needs. Maybe a little higher, but I'm going to have to put some big, good, heavy-duty return springs on it because we don't want it um, sticking the throttle open, that's for sure. There's that little tab over here that needs to be cut off and moved over here to uh, hold the double-nutted end of the cable. And that gives you some adjustment, too, on throttle pull. And uh, i got to put some sort of stop on the pedal so it doesn't crash and uh, over, uh, over pull the throttle and, and break it. So I may just put a double nutted bolt through here so the pedal hits it and I can adjust the nuts and adjust the travel how far it hits here. Maybe I'll put it right through the bolt, right through the frame right there and so it hits right here on the pedal. That's simple enough. Uh, I got the old big monster engine uh, unboxed in the garage, ready to try to set in and fit up. It looks like what I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to cut all of this out of here. And I'm going to get some 2 inch by 1 inch heavy wall tubing. And I'm going to space those to hold the engine just right and weld them and then bolt right through that and get rid of this whole thing. So I'm thinking tomorrow I'll be cutting that out and I'll be going up to the local manufacturing place that has lots of steel and have them cut some steel for me. I'll get my tubes to support my seat. I'm not sure if I'm going to like those pedals being that far apart. I might want them closer together so I might have to just put a little stub of pipe I might want to move this pedal in a little bit, so I might have to put another little block of steel or something here. And the same thing with the brake. Just move that in a little bit, so I'm not like spread eagle when I'm driving. Of course, that might give me a more stable feel. Well, I'll just see how it feels when I drive it. They're easily moved, you know, just a little tack in part. I got a wire feed welder here. You've seen me do some welding with a little beast. Now that I got my 30 amp circuit in here. So, all right guys. This is a teardown. I'm gonna put this up tonight just so you got something to see and uh, go ahead and clean all the grease off my hands. And I'm still waiting for this table to dry. I'm, I'm doing this stuff at the same time. That's why I can't be working on this go-kart right now, cutting with the grinder because it'll create so much dust. It'll contaminate my finish. So I've got to wait until my finishes are dry and I can throw a tarp or something over that while I work. And then I'll do my work on this and then when I get done with this, I'll put another coat of finish on that kind of a thing. Alright, I'm out of here. We'll see you on the next video.